So we'll now adjust the diagram to capture the fact that there is public employment. So I still have um, tightness on the y-axis, employment So when I say L, L is aggregate employment. Okay, so, so that means private plus public. Okay, so that's really total employment. All right, so what do we have? So labor supply, we said, um, has unchanged. We have the same uh, shape as before. But on the labor demand side, things have become a bit more interesting. So let's plot first um, the private labor demand, which is the same as before also. Uh, so we have theta m, which is the tightness at which um, the recruiter producer ratio becomes infinite and labor demand becomes zero. Private labor demand will become zero, so it looks something like this. Okay, so this is going to be <coughs> L D of theta. Uh, so that's private labor demand. Okay. But the equilibrium is not anymore private labor demand is equal to labor supply. So this, I should say, this is the aggregate labor supply. Um, so the equilibrium is not just um, private labor demand is equal to aggregate labor supply. Now, the equilibrium is aggregate labor demand is equal to aggregate labor supply. So, to that private labor demand, we need to add the public labor demand. That is, we need to add the number of workers that the government wants to hire. And that's going to give us an um, aggregate labor demand. So, this aggregate labor demand, let, let's make it a red, just to contrast. So let's say I'm going to make it here. And so this new curve that I've drawn, this is going to be LD of theta plus G. And that's the aggregate labor demand. So the difference between the private and the aggregate labor demand, uh, that's G. And um, G is just the size of, you know, it's, it's the amount of public employment, the size of the public sector. Okay, so, uh, so immediately we can see what is the effect of having a public sector on the economy. Um, so if G was zero, if there was no government uh, hiring, if public employment was zero, the equilibrium would be here. And this would be employment when G is equal to zero and the tightness would be here. Okay, and all employment will be private employment. Now, once we have G, what happens? Um, so we have a new equilibrium, you know, aggregate demand is equal to aggregate labor demand is equal to aggregate labor supply. The new equilibrium is here. We have a new L. Uh, 
when g is strictly positive and we'll solve under tightness. So clearly, increasing public employment is going to boost labor market tightness, so tightness is going to go up. It's going to boost our total employment. Okay, uh, but now the question is, uh, I guess a natural question is whether the increase in total employment is equal to the, to the increase in public employment. Uh, which is something that we are going to, uh, to study in a second. But at a, at a general level, uh, we know that when, uh, when we increase G, when we increase public employment, we are going to increase total employment. And we are also going to increase tightness. And as a result, uh, you know, which was the motivation all along, we are going to reduce unemployment. You can see the new level of unemployment is here. And clearly that a level of unemployment is much less than the level of unemployment prevailing if there is no public sector, which was given here. So clearly, unemployment has shrunk greatly by the introduction of public employment. Okay. Um, so if you want to summarize what happened here, introduction of public Employment G So with public employment, what do we have? So first aggregate employment goes up. Tightness, of course, theta goes up. Unemployment level, unemployment rate, U is going to go down. Uh, one interesting question is what happens to private employment? That's something we're going to uh, delve a little bit into in a second. Private employment, which is you know, given by, by our labor demand, LD of theta, what happens to it? That's kind of an interesting question, and it's good to see. So you see, um, initially, uh, private employment was given here. That was private employment, because initially we start from a situation when there is no public employment, so private employment, aggregate employment are the same. And then we uh, introduce public employment, which boosts the aggregate labor demand. You know, we move from the blue curve to the red curve. That shifts tightness, but you see as tightness goes up, it means that uh, the, the labor demand, the private labor demand doesn't change. You know, it's not affected by public employment. Uh, so the curve, the blue curve here is the same. But now we have a new tightness that's higher. And so that's this new point here at the higher tightness. This is LD of theta, so the private labor demand, or if you want, that's private employment. This is private employment when G is positive. So you can see when G is positive, uh, and this I should have said, this is the equilibrium uh, 
in this project. So um, private employment compared to where it was before is actually less because tightness has increased. We know that firms, when tightness is higher, they are less prone to hire because the higher tightness means that it's harder to recruit. You need to devote more resources to recruiting. So hiring workers is less profitable. And so actually we've moved from this point um, that we had here to this point here. Um, so actually private employment has decreased. So public employment goes up, but private employment falls. Nevertheless, total employment, which is the sum of the two things, remains higher because as we've seen, the new L here is larger than the original L. Um, but that increase is not as large as what the increase in the size of the public sector would um, suggest because while the public sector is bigger, the private sector has shrunk. And so this effect, the fact that the private sector shrinks, is what we call crowding out. Okay? So that's something that people talk a lot about when one sector influences another uh, sector in the, in the economy. Here the public sector influences the private sector. So essentially what happens is that the public sector starts hiring workers. So there are fewer unemployed workers to go around. There are also more vacancies because um, the government is posting vacancies and all this added competition for firms, firms have to compete for workers with the government and there are fewer workers available, makes it more costly to recruit and therefore less profitable to hire workers. And so when the government expands, the private sector is going to shrink a little bit. Um, of course, the overall effect is still, you know, the increase in the public sector is still going to dominate. Um, so that at the end, the total labor, the aggregate labor market will grow, but not as much as what you would have thought because of that crowding out. So what we've said is that private employment is actually going to fall. So there's crawling out of private employment by public employment through the mechanism that I've mentioned that. When the government grows, it competes with firms for workers, you know, by posting vacancies. Um, and that makes it uh, more expensive for firms to hire and hence to operate. And so they, they tend to uh, they tend to shrink. Uh, 